Hey our friends, welcome back. It's Miss Nikki here. I hope you all are doing very well. I hope our, you and your families are continuing to stay clean, stay safe, stay healthy, and also practicing so, social distancing and washing those hands. So I hope all of you are still uh, doing good and staying healthy, but also continuing to be active no matter what you're doing, whether it is art, music, sports, uh, playing outside on the nice days. I know it's Illinois, so we have nice days here and there. So really take the opportunity and advantage of the nice days that we do have. Um, remember to get some fresh air. Don't spend too much time in front of the TV. Um, but yeah, but keep uh, staying active and remembering to do the schoolwork that you are being given. You know, school is very important, so keep up with your schoolwork. And, you know, remember to have fun here and there. That's the main thing. Have some fun. Remember to stay positive. I know it may be hard here and there not being able to see friends and family, but continue to hang in there. Uh, it'll get better, okay? So what I thought we would do is for today that we would focus on a very important holiday that's coming up. And if you know what that is, maybe you want to give a shout out and shout it from the rooftops because Mother's Day is right around the corner. Uh, it's coming up really, really soon. And so I thought we would do some crafts that could be possible gifts or, um, you know, tokens of appreciation for the mothers in your life, whether it is your actual mom, whether it is a stepmom, whether it is your grandmother, your aunts, your babysitters possibly, your babysitters might be moms. Uh, so really show that you appreciate them and all that they do for you because they do a lot for you, okay? So really make sure that you show that you love and appreciate them day by day, not just on Mother's Day, but every day of the year. So say, I love you or I appreciate you every single day to show that you really care and you really love them for all that they do for you. So I thought we would do some things today that I kind of tinkered around with that I thought were pretty, some pretty cool gifts that we could do for them or give them. So one of them is this little coffee cup. I don't know if you guys can see it. So in this cup has some words of appreciation. This one uh, was kind of my like trial one. I have my actual one, so I'm gonna show you the actual one. It doesn't have a handle on it yet, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. But on our cup, so you're gonna just need two cups for this. Now I used paper cups because they were easier to write on and uh, easier to cut. The plastic ones were a little bit harder to cut and I don't want you guys to get hurt. So if you have some paper ones, great. If not, maybe ask for assistance to do the plastic ones, okay? Now if you have like the red solo cups at home, you could do um, those as well. You just need to like write whatever you want on a piece of small paper and then you would glue it right here. And then you could sh show your right words of appreciation and um, what you love about your mom in your life. And then they could turn it. And every time they turn it, it's gonna be something different. Now, you could do words or you could do pictures. I might do a picture one just to show you that you could do that. Um, kind of like symbols of your love instead of words. Like I know growing up, I used a lot of images like when I communicated. Um, I'm not, I wasn't the best speller, I know that. So if you don't like to write or not a good speller and you want to do pictures instead, go for it. This is art class, so really, you know, get into it. If you want to do um, some words and pictures, go for it. I might do that for my next one, for my example. So that way you could see some examples here and there. So what you're gonna need is two cups, some markers, scissors, possibly a ruler, um, if you really want to get like technical with the measurements, and then possibly construction paper or like cardboard, just for the handle. Um, you could use white paper too. I might use white paper just to show you. Um, 
but that's all you need for this. It's super, very simple. Uh, and I feel like it is such a cute project. So I thought um, this would be a good one for us to do. And me thinking of some of the things that you may have at home. You may have paper cups, you may not. Um, you may have plastic ones, I don't know, for like parties or whatnot. Um, so just keep that in mind, what you do have at home and what you don't have. You could possibly do this out of paper too. Um, I think, so the one that I saw online had printables, like you could print them out and then just stick them on a cup, or like cups like these. Um, specifically, I would use the print, printed version, or the printable one that I found online. Uh, I just found it on like Pinterest or the internet, I can't remember, but I remember seeing it like a long time ago and I thought it was just the most precious thing. So um, what you could do is you could find like a Mother's Day paper cup online and there's like a printable to go with it. I don't know how to get it or if you have to pay for it, um, but I just kind of like used it um, and did my own thing. So that's what I'm trying to show you. Um, but I got the idea from something that I saw online. So if you want, you could look at other things for Mother's Day online. There's a lot of cool things that your mom like might like. So maybe just, you know, see what they have online as well um, with your parents' permission first. Okay, so we're going to get started. So I'm going to turn my camera and point it down. And, oh, so if we have some time after making our cup, I thought I would give you a little tulip tutorial. A tulip tutorial. So these are just using construction paper or regular white paper if you don't have construction paper. And you could color these any color you want if you don't have construction paper. Same thing with the leaves. And straws. If you have some straws from like fast food joints that you never used um, and want to recycle them or kind of repurpose them, I feel like this is a great craft to do that with or a great project to do that with. So that way the straws aren't going in the garbage. And these are really super fun and three-dimensional. So I'm gonna turn my camera now. Oops. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Okay, sorry. Okie dokie. Alright. So, like I said, you could use um, whatever cups you have at home. This one is paper. This one is plastic. Uh, this one is uh, styrofoam. Um, so that's something different um, that you could use. I might try it with one of these just to see how it goes. Oh, that kind of works. So I did the plastic one first and then I realized like it's kind of a little tricky especially to cut your little window open because I did like cut it, it like cracked and it went all the way up. So you may not want to do the plastic one, but if that's all you have, go for it. You know what? Recycle, reuse, um, use what you got. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to cut your, uh, what's it called? Your little window for your words. Now I'm gonna measure the one I already did, so that way I could give you some measurement intel. It's kind of hard since the cup is round. I kind of just eyeballed it. Meaning I just took a guess on what size I needed. So it's almost two inches. Yeah. And then it's an inch and a half up. And so a little bit more than half an inch um, across. So it's almost a perfect square, but the bottom is a little longer than the top or the this the length of this of the square is not well I should say eh, I don't know what I'm saying uh, 
this part is just longer than the height of it, okay? Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. So, what you could do is using a pencil, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see. There we go. Okay. So I'm just gonna kind of sketch out where I want my window to be. So that looks good to me. So that's like an inch and a half. That's an inch and a half. Okay, so about an inch and a half. See that little long mark? That's the half point. Oh, it's blurry. You can't really see. Um, so there's a little mark in between the one and the two. That is your half way mark or half inch, an inch and a half. So that is the length of my square. It's an inch, because that's an inch, but then it's a little extra, so it's an inch and a, and a half. Okay, so it's not yet two inches. Um, it's just an inch and a half. All right. And then you're gonna need scissors. And if you don't trust yourself or you know need assistance, please ask for help. Um, yeah, don't, I don't want anybody getting hurt. So try your best, yeah. Just if you need to, maybe poke a hole with a, pe a pencil first. There you go, just like that. Do a couple holes if you need to. See, I did that with just a pencil. So I think try to use a pencil first before trying to use scissors, because I don't want anybody getting hurt. There we go. those fingers guys try your best with cutting it might be a little tricky okay now if you have any extra like pencil marks go ahead and erase those or you don't have to, we might cover those up with marker when we decorate. All right, so that's my little uh, window. All right. Now the next part is gonna be your words. So all you do is stick this cup in and you write your words. But maybe before we do that, we write out, I love you because. So using a marker, and you may want to write it a little smaller so that way your mom doesn't have to like turn the cup when, you, when she reads it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a little bit smaller than I did. Whoops. So I'm gonna just zoom out just a little bit. So that way I'm not crouching in the camera view. There we go. Okay. So I, so start way at the top, almost to this rim part of your cup. Love. You. Why owe you? Because, B-E-C-A. U S E and then you can put dot 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 if you want kind of like you know leaving a cliffhanger or like 
the next words are coming up, which are going to be down here. And then you could write Happy Mother's Day at the bottom. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to start right underneath Happy. H A P P Y. And then I'm going to start under the H with the, my M Mother's Day. an exclamation point because we are super happy that it is Mother's Day. Okie dokie. So then you would just drop your cup right inside and write words on why you love your mom or aunt or grandmother or babysitter or stepmom, whoever in your life is a mom. So, I'm gonna do another one because I think I'm gonna show you like some images that you can put. Um, so I'm gonna do images and words just to kind of switch it up. So I'm gonna put you help me with my problems. I'm going to continue with that. So you help me. Me. With. My problems. Now I suggest writing this in pencil first. So that way if you you don't mess up with the sharpie or markers whatever you may be using um, it's just so like if you make a mistake you can erase it I just go for it with my sharpie but now I'm gonna do an image so I'm gonna do pencil first because images are a little harder than words so I'm going to put hmm. I think I might put a cupcake. So on my other one I put my mom is that you are, I love you because you are a great cook. My mom is a good cook. Um, she cooks a lot of cool things for us that I love and that, but she's also a very awesome baker. She bakes a lot of fresh banana bread with, you know, the leftover bananas that we haven't eaten because they're all like mushy. So she mushes them up and then she puts them in a banana bread that are so good. Um, so I might just put a, like a cupcake or maybe even her banana bread. <laughs> um, I don't know. I might just put a cu cupcake. Baker. And then go ahead and color it in. So I put a little cherry on top. Um, what color frosting? I think I'm going to do blue frosting. I'm just going to color the cupcake foil or outline it with black. Just an outline. Okay. Now the next one. I'm going to write um, You Support Me. Because my mom does support me a lot. Support. Because 
I should have put you support me. I forgot to put you, so support me because you I love you because you because support me. <laughs> so I forgot to put you support me. So that I made a whoopsie on and now I can't erase it. So do pencil first. All right, so this one's gonna be an image. So I'm gonna put a smiley face because she makes me smile. There we go. And then, so if you have room, so I accidentally did this a little over, um, so now I have a little bit of extra room, but if you wanna put something there too. You could put, um, I love you because you love me. You love me. And then every time they turn it, there's something different. Okay. So now what you can do is you could decorate the cup. You could decorate it with flowers, some leaves, um, whatever else your mom enjoys, maybe like a book or little polka dots here and there. I might do some polka dots. So I'm thinking, so I'm just going to go ahead and just decorate. You could decorate with some patterns. I'm doing polka dots, kind of making a frame. So that's what I did around this one. I made like a little frame. There we go. But I don't have room for all, all the polka dots. Um, if your mom likes coffee, you can put like a coffee symbol on, like a coffee bean or, um, I saw one that for like, like a Mother's Day project where it was like a, a teapot and it put, and it wrote, you are terrific. Uh, you could put that on here. Um, you are terrific. Uh, I think you, it would be spelled T-E-A instead of T-E-R. Um, it would be T-E-A-R-R-I-F-I-C, terrific. I don't know. You would have to like research. I saw it somewhere, but I swear it was so cute. They put you are terrific on it and it came with like a little tea bag. So I thought that was another cute project that I was interested in, in possibly doing, but I saw this one and I love this one. You could actually serve your mother in bed with some a nice cup of tea or coffee or even water, whatever they drink, with this cup. And it'd be so cute. But I wouldn't recommend it because these will get hot. So maybe not the best idea. But you could also... Um, so next project is going to be these flowers. If you want, you could put um, some little rocks in here and then you could put your flowers in here so I'm gonna show you how to make flowers next but before we do that we gotta finish um, this one first so uh, decorate it you could put you are terrific or you know put some flowers on there I'm gonna put some flowers here and there so so I'm just gonna do some swirly flowers and you're probably like what is she talking about so here are some swirly flowers. I'll show you how to make these too. So they kind of look like lollipops, but then when you add some leaves to it, kind of looks like kind of 
kind of looks like a, a flower. You could do that in so many different colors. So all I did, just like that, I just did a swirly, kind of like a lollipop. And then I'm just adding little leaves to the sides. more and then I'm gonna show you I'm gonna do so my mom's favorite color is fuchsia which is this color so she's gonna like that one so if you are doing a paper one you could also paint it um, that's up to you uh, you would just have to wait for things to dry but if you're impatient like me, you could use marker. I, so I tried painting a plastic one that did not go so well and the paint immediately peels off. So I don't recommend painting a plastic cup. These ones are fine because they are paper and they will absorb the paint. So that's fine, but don't do plastic cups with paint. Maybe acrylic, acrylic would probably work on the plastic, but not tempera, no, no. Tempera is not working well with this, and, it, and I kind of painted the whole thing, so then I couldn't even write words on it. So I put this piece of paper there, hoping that would work, um, but it just didn't, so don't do that. <laughs> um, but on this one, I used uh, Sharpie. So if you have Sharpie, or you could try um, Crayola markers, but they're water-based, so they may not work as well, but you have to do some experimenting here and there. Remember, use what you got. I just use Sharpie because I like the colors. They're, they pop a little bit more, but I know some of you are not allowed to use them or don't have them. Because Sharpies are a little bit more expensive because they are permanent. That is why. So, permanent marker. But they're also called Sharpies. So there you go. Now, I'm going to put a handle on it. So, I have some extra cardboard that I'm going to use. Oh, and I'm going to show you how to draw one. So, I have extra cardboard. If you don't have cardboard, just use um, simply uh, white paper if you have it. I'll also show you on white paper. So I'll show you on white paper first. So all you're gonna do is kind of draw half a heart. So, and try to think about your cup and how big your cup is. Maybe put some lines for yourself to show you not to go beyond those points. So, there we go. And then you're gonna do a line down line up and then you're gonna follow that line but on the inside so start here and you're following that line you're giving the handle some thickness so you're following that outer line and you're connecting just like that and then you would just cut that out now I'm using uh, so you would cut it out and then glue it sorry so I'm gonna use a uh, cardboard because that is what I have and it's a little sturdier so your mom could hold it so this one I just used uh, uh, what's it called construction paper my goodness uh, construction paper so I mean this one's pretty sturdy too so white paper will be okay too I feel like I feel like but I'm not sure you may have to experiment but also use what you have so again I made this one previously, so you're just kind of making almost like a like a tilting rainbow, like it's almost like fall, like tilting to the side. It's almost like a tilting rainbow, or like a you know leaning one, leaning over. It's kind of like a leaning rainbow. 
and then you're just gonna go on the inside just like that or if it helps uh, think of an ear it kind of looks like an ear so this is the outside of your ear and then this is the inside of your ear if that helps um, if that kind of visually helps you um, picture that in your mind so then cut that out and then go ahead and glue it I'm going to use what's it called um, hot glue gun to glue mine so I kind of bent so here is my handle I kind of bent the edges a little bit so that way I have some place to put the glue because it's going to be really tricky if you just try to stick it on there so bend the sides or the the beginning of the handles so that way you can put the glue right on here and then just now you might have to wait and hold but I'm using a hot glue gun because I'm impatient and I'm running out of time so and then go ahead and glue it on the side you might overlap whatever you you drew um, so just keep that in mind see I kind of covered some of my flowers but that's okay if you want to do your handle before you draw you can do that I just did it um, last and it's a little far back there but it's okay and there you go got a nice little mug for your mom or your grandma or your aunt or your stepmom or your babysitter whoever is the mom in your life and there you go I feel like they would really love this so I'm gonna put this off to the side and get going on the, the tulips so I'm gonna show you using purple construction paper and then uh, oh before we do the tulips I'm gonna just show you this sorry I'm getting off track but I'm gonna just show you how I did this flower this flower is a little tricky but if you want to try to master it I should say or try it out this is just another way of making a flower so all I did was I took a cup or even a yogurt container or whatever you have I just used a cup I traced my cup and if you want to do a whole bunch of them and try them out first or draw a bunch and then cut them out at once you could do that so I did I traced a whole bunch of circles all over and then you do kind of like that swirly thing kind of like how I did it on my cup kind of like a swirly swirly flower so I did a whole bunch on this side so I'm gonna show you and I'm just gonna show you one because I do want to show you the, the tulips there we go so I cut my circle out and now I'm gonna cut right on that spiral I'm gonna follow that line until I reach the end Now, this part is the easy part. It's the next part that's a little tricky because um, you do have to put a good amount of glue and kind of be patient with the next part. It's easier for me because I don't have, oh, see, I got the other flower on the back. Whoopsies, um, but that's okay. So I cut out my thing and now it's got like a little bling. It's like a little um, spring almost. So now what you're gonna do is you're going to at the very tip you're gonna curl it so think to my last video where I explained to you what quilling was if you guys remember that or if you're just joining me for Mother's Day projects uh, quilling is the art of curling paper in order to make designs or patterns or images and you're just curling 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 if you want to stick your finger in there and curl around your finger you can do that it kind of helps support the the shape all right 
Now I reached the end, so the middle part. So what you're going to do is put some glue right there, okay? So I'm going to use my hot glue gun now. If you're doing hot glue gun, which you probably shouldn't, um, just be careful if, you know, you might burn your fingers. So I don't suggest it. But I'm going to do actually both. So I'm going to put some glue. And there you go. This one's a lot um, like tighter, but if you let it go, it'll get to this shape. You could also do that. I'll show you for that shape as well. So I'm just going to cut out another one of my circles to show you that. So that one I did a little bit too tight. So I'm, I'm going to show you how to get that other one. Some people like the look of this one. Some people like the look of the other one. It's all about your preference, but these are kind of um, somewhat easy to make, but they are a little tricky. You may just have to experiment and play around with it if you and find the way that you like to assemble it, I should say. So I'm following my line till I reach the end. There we go. Got my little spring shape, I should say. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did to the first one. So I'm curling, curling, curling. Remember, keep it tight in your fingers because it's going to try to spring out at you. So remember, try to keep that in mind that it will want to jump out at you. Um, so just keep it tight. It's kind of like quilling. Like you got to keep, you know, the, the, the coils together or the paper tightly wound. So, but for this flower, if you want to get this flower, then all you're going to do is let go. So see how it instantly like, poof, it instantly like boinged out or kind of like, you know, spiraled out. So then on that big flat part that we have, add some glue. There we go. Add a good amount of glue. And then you're just kind of, kind of place the petals in there. If you want to put glue on the outside petals for more support so it doesn't unravel unravel on you go ahead and try to stick some of the petals together if you want you don't have to but it will keep the flower from like coming out like this so i might put some glue on this one and then glue it to the the outer petal that's right behind it if you know what i'm saying just so it doesn't like pop try to like unravel on you and pop out because it it may want to do that and that's how you do the spiral flowers but like I said it, it takes a little finesse or you know practice to do those um, I did a big one the other day for my art imagination students I showed art imagination uh, this one as well because they were doing a bouquet of flowers we're gonna do a bouquet of our own but ours are different flowers depending on if you only have access to this video or if you are able to jump videos I don't know uh, I don't know the whole video situation uh, but yeah okay so I'm gonna get so this is my purple paper for my tulips I'm gonna do purple um, tulips call, uh, call ugh, come in all uh, colors they come in yellow orange uh, some of them are striped. Um, I don't know how that happens. Some of them are purple, like a dark fuchsia almost. Some of them are bright pink. Some of them are red. They come in all sorts of colors, so the, they are certainly very popular around this time. They're kind of the symbol of Mother's Day. Um, I don't know why that is, but <laughs> I think it's also because it is also spring, and mothers like flowers. 
for the most part. So I feel like tulips are associated with Mother's Day. So that's why I'm also showing you this. Because who knows, your mom, my mom really loves tulips. Like she loves, loves, loves tulips and sunflowers. Um, so I try to get those when I'm out shopping for her birthday or for um, Mother's Day. I try to look for sunflowers and tulips. So I got my two straws because I'm just going to make two more. So that way I have like almost like a bouquet of flowers. And then I have my green paper for my leaves. And you can see I used um, some of it for my other ones. I may need more though. Or I have, I think, multiple colors of green. Okay. So I'm going to fold this paper. And you don't have to make it necessarily the size. They are kind of like on the smaller side. You can make them bigger if you want. I'm just going to try to stick with that size. Now if you want to print out like almost like a silhouette of a tulip, you can if that helps you. I'm just going to show you how to draw one uh, really quick and kind of help you out a little bit. So hold on. I'm just going to... Or maybe I won't have time for two, but... So I'm just going to do kind of like a loop. Uh, I don't like that one. So if it helps you, try to do a raindrop first. Oh, you can't really see on this. So let's see. Okay. I'm going to show you with the marker. Do, do yours in pencil, please. Because um, I don't want you guys to mess up and be frustrated. So there we go. Start with a raindrop shape first. And then you go out on both sides. And then you come in on both sides. And there you go, you got a tulip. Now the reason why I folded my paper is so that when I, I cut this now, it's gonna not just cut one, it's gonna cut two. So, And if you wanna cut on the inside of the black line to get rid of some of the black, that's fine too. Zoom out just a little bit. Now I can't erase those black lines on the inside, but you can since I hope you guys use pencil. The reason I'm using marker is because the lighting in here is not the best and I want you guys to be able to see nice and clear what I'm trying to draw for you. So please don't use marker, use anything else but, okay? So there you go, I have my tulip shape. Now, if you like the t first tulip that you drew, great, save it. And then all you, you can, what you can do is trace. So I'm gonna just trace my tulip that I did. And it will also be the same shape, so they will line up evenly when you attach them. There we go. So I'm gonna cut out that one as well. And I'm holding my paper, I'm turning it as I cut, because tulips are curvy, so you turn your paper as you cut to help those curves. There we go. Oh, ready. So this is my first one. So for your first tulip, you're going to need four of uh, tulip shapes. So you're going to need, so the first one you drew, you're going to need four of these. Whoops, sorry, I was out of the shot. So you are going to need four of these. I'm only going to have time to show you how to do one, which is, I think, plenty enough. Um, I think one is fine. Uh, I'm just running out of time. So now what I want you to do is maybe take two, stack them on top of each other, make sure they're lined up nice and even. And then I want you to fold it in half. Fold it in half the best you can. It may not line up perfectly. See, that one's not lined up like totally perfect, but it's close enough. So as long as there's like a line in the middle, 
okay? Because that's going to help you out. All right, I'm going to fold this one now. Just like that. All right, give it a good press. All right, so now when you pull them apart, every um, petal is folded. So this one has the black on it, so I'm actually going to fold it inward, so that way that's where the glue goes. So that one is going to be my inward-facing one. Okay. And if you want, what you can do is, if they not, are not exactly perfect and you want them to be perfect, if you're kind of a perfectionist, you can cut them side by side to get that equal symmetry. So symmetry is when you unfold it, it's the same on both sides. So that's sy symmetrical now. Whereas some of these other ones are not as symmetrical, but you know what? You could fix that. So I would just go with my scissors, cut, and then cut that off, and there you go. So for the sake of time, I'm going to use my hot glue gun again, but you guys will use um, your regular glue. So. Fold your first one in half, and then add your glue, and then have the next one ready, and you're going to lay it right on top. Hold it down for a good, like, ten seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then when you unfold it, it's, it's going to stick where you put that glue, and then you have something that looks kind of like that. So see what I'm saying? Now, you can fold both of those back together, and you could do a third one. Add that glue, have your next one ready. Oops. Try to line it up best you can. Mine is a little tricky because I have hot glue. And it wants to stick right away. So you'll have probably a better chance of lining them up really nice with your regular glue. All right. So now I have three perfect, like, folded ones stacked right on top of each other. They're one right after the other. And so when I unfold it, it's going to look like this. Now you're probably like, well, three's enough, but I think four even looks better. So that's why I did four. You, you can do three if that's all you, you know you want to do, but I like the look of four. There we go. So now before you do your fourth one, go ahead and attach your straw right in the middle. Now for your straw, you might need to hold it a little longer. So I have these bendy straws, which are kind of cool. So I could actually bend my flower. If you have those, use these. These are great. Um, super fun. You could actually like tilt your flower, depending on what flower you're making, um, to kind of make it look like it's, I don't know, arching towards the sun or whatnot. So I'm going to put that right in there. And then you're going to put glue. I'm actually just going to use regular glue for right for this last part. So, whoops. Oops, my glue did not like that. So, I'm going to put glue all in there on top of my straw. And then you can line it up. Try the right side first and then the left side. Like I said, you might have to hold it down a little longer if you are using regular glue, which you should. So see, it, it's going to want to slide around on you. So try to keep it in place. When it's in place, give it a good press. Glue might come out the sides. Just wipe that away. So there we go, there's your flower. Let it dry. It's a little, I think I 
use the back side or used it backwards because it's not lining up the way I'd like, but it looks good enough to me. Okay. Now for your leaves, you can do straight ones. You could do straight ones that look like this, where it's like a long parenthesis and then one right on the other side. You could do two of those. Or you could, so I think when an actual tulip leaf looks kind of a little squiggly, so you could give it a little squiggle. Almost looks like seaweed almost. So if you want, you could give it a little squiggle. Kind of looks a little bit more fun. So those are my squiggled, squiggly leaves. Now you don't have to do just two. You could do four if you want. You can make it extra leafy. Because flowers are leafy. Flowers have more than two leaves. There we go. I'm gonna actually cut out my other ones to show you. You could put a variety. You could put this mixed with your kind of curvy ones. Leaves are straight, leaves are curvy. Leaves can be all sorts of shapes and sizes, just like trees. So go ahead, add a line of glue on your leaves. And then you're just going to stick it on the side or all over. So that one's going to go on the back. This one's going to go on the side. This one's going to go down here. And then this one's going to go up here. So that one's really leafy. So that Oops, but you gotta let it dry because that's not, that's, those are gonna slip right off. So whatever you're putting on the straw, um, to, because straws are mostly plastic, if you're using paper straws, great, you don't have to worry about this problem, but mostly if you have plastic straws from like fast food joints, they're going to be plastic, so you're going to have to let your leaves dry on there so that they don't fall off when you're trying to put them in your little pot or cup, whatever you want to put these in. So I'm going to actually put these in my Mother's Day cup just to show you guys. So I just have some beads. If you have pebbles, pebbles will work great. I'm going to put some beads in there and then I'm going to stick my tulips right in there. You might need a lot. You might need to fill it all the way because these are tall, so you might have to fill it a little bit more than what I have, just so that they stand upright and they don't want to fall over or lean over. Now, if you have like a spare um, flower pot at home, you could paint that for your mom. I feel like she would really enjoy that. And you could put, actually, if you have some dirt and some some seeds from like flowers or vegetables you could probably start growing a plant in there um she would probably love that so there we go and you just stick those in there and have that pot all nicely painted and i feel oops see that's what i mean it's gonna want to pop out so you gotta really stick them in there so there you go you could put it in here, or you could put it in your handy dandy little cup that you made. See? Alrighty. Uh, 
Hello, me again. Okay, so, sorry about that, Ooh, no, all right, well I hope you liked today's lesson, um, or craft, whatever you prefer, uh, cause it is Mother's Day related, so I hope you kiddos made something extra special and nice for your mom, cause she is very important, um, or whoever the other mother in your life is, so I feel like they would really, really enjoy this and it would make them feel really special. And you know what? They would probably really appreciate that you did that for them for Mother's Day, um, whoever it may be. So I feel like this is a good project for you to do for some people in your life. Whether it is Mother's Day, you could also do this for Father's Day if you want. That's cool too. All right, so thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was fun for you, kiddos or parents, whoever else is watching. Um, and I hope to see you next time. Uh, this is, I think, the last video maybe, but we're gonna see with, and we're gonna try something new called live streaming starting for the next part of May. Uh, or the next couple weeks of May. So we're gonna see. Um, I do miss you guys a lot and I hope that this is all over soon so that way I could see you guys. Um, remember to stay optimistic. I know it's gonna be hard here and there, but please remember to stay happy and healthy, all right? Well, you have a good week. Bye-bye. <laughs>